Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. So my name is Deborah Menelos and my husband Stuart is busy in the studio working on a new documentary that we're making. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different over the next few weeks. So many of you are no longer able to go to traditional church because of wrong teaching and you're experiencing what the Bible refers to as apostasy, one of the most prevalent signs of the times eschatologically, with a great falling away from biblical truth. Now this has meant that much of the Church of Jesus Christ, sometimes known as the remnant, Bible-believing Christians who don't want to compromise what the Bible teaches, has gone full circle and reverted back to what it was originally, the ecclesia in Greek, the called out ones who meet together in houses to study the Bible, worship and have good fellowship, which is more easily facilitated because house church contains smaller groups. Now, my husband Stuart and I have a small house church. We've had it for nigh on 20 years. Now, it's consistently expanded and diminished and expanded and diminished as we disciple those who come and they're then able to go on to other pastors as the Lord leads. Now, I can assure you that it isn't something we ever sought to do. As my husband often says, nobody in their right mind would want to be a pastor. But there is a time to step up to the mark as God leads. Now, for us... Leadership means having a servant heart, and if we're not willing to wash feet, you cannot pastor or shepherd the little flock that God gives you. Accountability is all important, so we submit to one another in love, fellowshipping with other pastors and sometimes encouraging and teaching the younger ones, and counselling is required. Now, our last few programmes have made the point clear that without love, we are nothing. And for our church, the scripture about us dwelling together in unity, which pleases God so much, is always uppermost in our minds, as we can read in Psalm 133. Now, as you'll know from our programmes, love and discipleship have to be the bedrock, and the servant heart is essential. And if your pastor doesn't have one, he may well not be called to be one. And sadly, that is sometimes the case, with heavy shepherding and bullying being the order of the day. So the purpose of these programmes is to help encourage both those of you who are seeking answers to the meaning of life and for those of you who need encouragement in regards to church life. In other words, knowledge of the scriptures is an ongoing study, living the scriptures, bearing good fruit, loving the brethren and encouraging each other as we persevere towards the crown of life and on into future glory where there will be no more wickedness. So for the next few weeks, we're going to interview some believers who are willing to share with you their faith and journey in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see how we do it, hear what God has done in their lives and hopefully be encouraged. Now to start with, I have James Jarvie with me and he was featured in episode 47 called Cage Fighter to Christ as he took us on his tour of Nepal and what God was doing there. And after that, we'll be talking to Jarvie's wife, Maria, as long as she hasn't gone into labour in that time. So Jarvie, welcome. Thank you. It's lovely to see you again. I can't remember the last time, maybe a couple of days ago, <laughs> but it's, it's great to have you back on Global Vision. Jarvie, I've written out a few questions here just to kind of keep us on track, um, because you have a wonderful story to tell. God has done amazing things in your life. So... First of all, just maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to Christ. Uh, well, I was brought up in a non-Christian family. I wasn't really uh, brought up in a, an environment where we spoke about God or the Bible or anything. I went to a Catholic school and they taught us some stuff, but it was more about the saints and just repetitive prayer. In the morning we say one prayer, in the morning we say a different prayer. And it, but I always had a deep sense of, of God, I always had a faith, a, a belief that there is a God. It made sense to me that there had to be a, a God or nothing in this world actually makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And so I used to lay in bed at night puzzling over, even in primary school, I'd sing, sit in bed thinking, why is there anything other than nothing? And this troubled me, mm -hmm. but God made sense of that. 
And so I went through life thinking, uh, I know there's a God, but in everything in between, I made up myself because I didn't know any, any better. I didn't know anyone that was a Christian. I'd never heard of a Christian. I assumed every Christian was a Catholic. So it was only when I was 29 that I felt the Lord's call to come to church and hear the gospel and I gave my life to Christ. So for you, what was the gospel then? What was the difference between that and Roman Catholicism? Or the Roman Catholicism you knew from school? Well, at school, Jesus was never emphasised. And so my attitude was, why do I need Jesus? I can go straight to God and just skip out the middleman. And so all my prayers were always to a God I didn't know. And then when I went to church and I heard them all speaking and praising Jesus, I knew in my heart that this is the bit I'm missing. Mm -hmm. All my life, this is the area, the piece of the puzzle that's been missing. Mm -hmm. And it was that that day the pastor called me into his office and said, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. And I had never heard anyone say that. And I was, but I knew, I knew what he said was true. And he said it three times and I knew I had to do it. But part of my mind was thinking, no, you don't want to do it just yet. You can't live a life like that yet. You can't be faithful and all these things. So I thought, okay, I accept what you say is true and I'm going to go and live my life. And when I'm in a position, then I'll accept Christ and live a good life. But for the, for the seven days after that, I couldn't get Jesus out of my mind. I knew this was what I needed. And I thought, do you know what, Jesus, I say I always believed in God, but I'm not prepared to trust you. And I thought, okay, I'm prepared to trust you that everything else will follow and fall into place once I commit my life to you. And, and I actually had a MMA fight to become the Scottish MMA champion one week after my, my experience in church. And I said, okay, I'm not going to think about it until this fight is over with, and then, I'll, then I'm going to make a decision. And right after the fight, I called up the pastor and said, okay, I want to give my life to Christ. So could you explain to the viewers then what an MMA fight is? What, yeah. what was it that you were doing in those days? It was, a lot of people know it as cage fighting, but it's mixed martial arts. And it's a combination of fighting styles and you can go into a ring or a cage and you compete against each other. So did you have to give all that up? Did you do it right away or how no, did it work? I, uh, actually, when I gave my life to Christ, it was the most amazing experience. I woke up the next, it was like the next day I woke up and if something was different, life was different and there was something missing from within me, an anger that was gone. And I, I didn't know what it was. I thought, where's this anger that I've got? Where's it? It's not there. And I thought, how can I fight now? It's gone. It's missing. I need this to fight. But I didn't ever plan to give up fighting. I just thought I'll be a Christian who fights. But because that was missing, I thought, okay, what am I going to do? And then I was in a prayer meeting about a week or two later, and I heard the Lord speak to me so clearly. And the words were, you do not have to do this anymore. And I says okay, I'm done. That's and I never great. fought again. That's great. Yeah. That's a real turnaround. So what was uh, church life like at the beginning? Well, as a new Christian, it was it was pretty amazing. I was in an environment, I had a desire to know Jesus and to know everything about the Bible and everything pertaining to my faith. But not everyone had that desire. And I was, I was finding myself to be in an environment with people who've been there for 20 years, 30 years, and didn't know it very much. And it was discouraging, but I thought, okay, I'm still going to keep learning and try to work all of this out. And it was just great to be in an environment, but looking back, I can see the danger is you adopt the behaviours of the people around you. If they don't desire to go deeper in Jesus, they don't desire to be obedient, then the danger is you become like them. You imitate them because you think this is Christianity. So you think, okay, well, I'm just going to do and behave the same way as everybody else, all these other Christians, because they've been doing it for so long. But I, I couldn't, I, I never had that. I, I've had this deep desire 
to go deeper and understand more. And so that's what I did. And the more I learned, the more problems I started to see within the mm. church. Mainly that was they did not address sin. They did not address behaviours. It was mainly just love Jesus and just do whatever you like. Mm-hmm. And that's a real problem. Mm-hmm. But it took a long time for me to come to a realisation just how bad things are. Now, I remember the day I first met you, my my cousin Andrew brought you round. Yeah, reluctantly. Uh, and what was the story behind that? Well, uh, he actually came to the same church and I got asked to befriend him and look after him. He recommitted his life to Christ and he wanted to walk upright before the Lord. And so I don't know why I got asked because I was relatively new. But they seen I had a desire to learn and they thought we could hit it off. And uh, and he one day turned up and says, my uncle's making a documentary on biblical prophecy. And I instantly thought that would probably, probably be rubbish because whose uncle makes a documentary? <laughs> and that's actually what I thought. And then I never thought any more about it. And a month, a month or two later, he said, my uncle's finished that documentary. <laughs> and I'm like, what documentary? Because I really didn't give it much thought when he first told me. And... Uh, and he's, he said, do you want to go down and watch it? And I racked my brain thinking of an excuse not to watch this. <laughs> and I couldn't think of any. So I decided, okay, let's go to my house and watch it. But I was reluctant to watch it. And after 10 minutes of watching, it was the Daniel Project. I thought, this is amazing. And he says to me, and I opened up my laptop. I was going to order some for evangelism. And I thought, and he said to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm ordering some copies of these. He says, it stays round the corner. I thought, no way. He says, let's go round and grab some. I went, okay. So we went round the corner to grab some. And I had some real social problems. I'm not good socially. I'm a lot better now. But back then, I had some real problems in socialising. So I didn't want to meet Stuart or or you, or anybody. I just wanted the DVDs so I could go to work. And and I said to Andy, Andy, there's the money, go get the DVDs, I'll wait in the car. And I was actually running back to the car when Stuart comes to the door. And he's like, Jarvie, Stuart wants us to go in. I was like, man, I was so close. I was almost <laughs> at the car. And, uh, and Stuart brought me in, and we spoke for about an hour and a half, and Stuart just, all the stuff I was reading, he knew... Mm-hmm. All the stuff is with the first guy I met that knew the stuff that I'm reading, the people that I'm, I'm looking into. And I just thought, man, it was the best conversation. And I left feeling very blessed mm-hmm. that I finally met someone who actually knows, who's got a desire to learn. It was great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah, you were like a wee frightened rabbit in those days, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> Now, so Jarvie, you carried on going to an established church, church building and so on for, for a while. Um, then, I believe, we um, we auditioned you for we were doing a movie. Yeah. Uh, we were doing the movie version of The Daniel Project. It's called The Daniel Connection. And this was a professionally made film for people who would not watch a documentary uh, who probably wouldn't go to church, they, so they wouldn't hear about the gospel of the kingdom or they wouldn't hear about uh, Bible prophecy. So um, Stuart and I believed the Lord was leading us to make a feature film about it with all that that entails. Mm. And we needed a baddie. We needed quite a number of soldiers and you came for an audition. That's right. So tell us how that went for you. Yeah, I think it... I think I got an email from Stuart asking me would I be prepared to do to be a soldier in a new thing that he was working on. It didn't give me much details, but that after meeting you a couple of times, I, be, I knew for sure that you were dedicated to serving the Lord. And so I thought whatever you are doing is going to be for the Lord. And so I had no doubt that I was happy to help any way that I can in auditioning. It didn't come naturally for me, but in service to the Lord, I knew he would give me the strength to do what was required. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was was quite embarrassing doing the audition, but- I remember, I remember. The Lord certainly blessed us and it turned out to be very good. You're a dear brother in the Lord now, Jarvie, because your life really changed after that. So Mm -hmm. 
Um, what happened? You had a transition from the large church you were a part of yeah. to coming uh, to becoming part of a small house church. So could you just tell us, what were the differences that you saw? Well, I think the main difference was the everyone in the church had has a desire to know the Lord. They were all... That's in the small church. The yeah, sorry, church in, the, in the small church, in the house church, they had a desire to know God in a sense where they wanted to study his word, they wanted to be faithful, they wanted to be obedient to to his calling. And in the established church that I was a part of, it wasn't to the same degree. Mm-hmm. People wanted to be obedient by going to church on a Sunday. And this was then obedient. You were a good Christian if you went to church every Sunday. So when you started to come to um, our little church, uh, the f- first thing you had to undergo really, <coughs> excuse me, um, is, and it's ongoing, is discipleship. Well, and the, the difference between the previous church, the established church and the house church, in the established church, they keep saying this word discipleship. They're always saying we need to disciple people, we need to do discipleship, but never nothing actually ever materialises or when it does it's usually something like alpha courses or some other marketing psychology based course to keep people in the church essentially and so when I came to the church it was more about accountability to each other and to the word if we were walking in a way or speaking in a way that was contrary to the word then the person you were accountable to would actually speak to you in love and direct you to walking right before the Lord. In the church, it was more an attitude of just love Jesus and everything will be okay. But that's not discipleship. Mm-hmm. And so that was a massive difference. And for me especially, I had been learning so much and I couldn't put all the pieces together. And so when I came under Stuart, he helped me put it all together and... The problem at that point was I saw just how far the established church was from the true sound doctrine. I had a wee smile on my face there when you were talking about um, uh, accountability to one another because it isn't just to um, Stuart or myself or any other leaders in the church. It really is to one another Mm. because your brothers will correct you as well Mm. and you correct your brothers. It's beautiful the way it works, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's, I, it's great. And uh, like my friend Johnny, who's part of the church, who you'll probably see soon, uh-huh. is he's great for, you always say, can I challenge you on this? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> and it's great to have that because yeah. if you've got a desire to walk up right before the Lord, you want someone to say, maybe your attitude wasn't correct here, so that you can correct it, mm-hmm. so you can honour the Lord. Mm-hmm. Jarvie, if you're if if there was one word to sum up what we have in our church, what would that be? I mean, really, what's the the founding principle? I say unity. Unity, yeah. We're all one mind. Mm-hmm. And um, we went away. We um we have these annual weekends away, and God has done some amazing things in your life. Mm. Um, something you'd been praying about for a few years mm. came to pass. What was that? I got married. You got married. <laughs> he, did, he didn't just get married. The Lord bought the most beautiful woman into his life with a, be- a beautiful spirit, a young woman. And it was a, it was a whirlwind engagement because mm. we've been praying for years for the right one for Jarvie. Well, we, we prayed for a, for a long time and... I was single for a long time, but I was quite content for a long time being single and just getting to know the Lord. Sometimes it was difficult. You go through periods of loneliness, but ultimately I wanted to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting between the parallels of advice from the church, from the institutional church and from the fellowship. Mm -hmm. And what one church always said to me, don't worry, the Lord has his best in store for you. And I was like, yeah, it's great. It's great to hear that. But then when I came to fellowship, Stuart says to me, Jarvie, you're not married because you're not ready to be married. And it was hard to hear, but I knew what he said was true. And Stuart's encouragement was always to get right with the Lord, get 
everything in your life focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and everything will follow after that. Mm. And I took his advice and I started to focus more instead of going out more and and occupying myself with hobbies and things that keep me interested and keep my mind off the fact that I'm not married or in a relationship. I focused on the Lord's word even more and things started to, to happen. I started to grow more and my attitude started to change. And then the Lord brought me a wife mm-hmm. when my attitude was right. Before, looking back, my attitude was not right. I was, yeah, I mean, I had a lot to learn and I was very thankful for that advice. But this is the danger in the church. They're not grounded in sound doctrine. And so it's always encouragement to meet people who have walked the walk and and who have been sanctified in the word. And so they can encourage you rightly before the Lord. And we're going to be meeting her shortly. And um, you're expecting your first baby. Yeah. And I mean any minute, okay? Yesterday was your due date. So so you've got a lovely wife, you've got a baby on the way, you're feeling more complete now. And we went away, uh, you came on one of your first weekends away with us mm-hmm. this year. What did that mean to you, Jarvie? Because I know that um, y- y- you felt you lack social skills. There's a shyness there at times. Sure. Um, but everybody, when we go away, everybody has to bring a word uh, or share. Um, we all take part in games and challenges and things like that that just draws us closer together. There's a real love, isn't there? Yeah. How did you find the weekend away? Yeah, I thought it was just amazing to be just to dwell with the brethren in love. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic to be in a place when everyone's of one mind mm-hmm. and we're all encouraging each other mm-hmm. to be obedient and walk up rightly before the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing. And, you know, in the morning that we were leaving, we were just about to have our prayer time before we all left. And I have to say, and because I know Jarvie wouldn't say it, God used Jarvie in a very mighty way to bring a, a wonderful word from the Lord that brought incredible comfort to to a couple um, who were there who just really needed to, to hear that word from the Lord. So the Lord can use you in any way he wants. Now, Jarvie, we're almost at our time. Um, what about... Uh, uh, what have you learned about regular Bible study and regular fellowship? I mean, are, are, is it easy to be disciplined? Because you work three weeks offshore and then three weeks back yeah. again. So it must be quite tough for you. What are the challenges? It's really just a, a, a complete time difference. Working 12 hours a day, by the time you get washed, get your get some food to uh, get something to eat, you've got very little time to study. So I end up reading just a couple of chapters, having some prayer time, praying with my wife, and then I'm straight into bed. He prays for his wife by phone, by the way. She's yeah. she's at home while you're working offshore yeah. on that on an oil rig. Um, but has your life changed in any way, really, doing this regular praying and a regular Bible study? One of the greatest things that we can grasp when we walk with Christ is obedience. That's what the Lord's calling all of us to be, obedient. And it was something that I'm only now starting to truly grasp for the, for the few years previous, I didn't put too much focus on obedience or walking up rightly before the Lord. I wanted to live a good life, but I didn't really know what the Lord desired of me fully. And as I've walked on and studied with Stuart and learned, the weight of that is pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. That is, and it's, the more you learn, the more the desire comes to want, want to serve the Lord mm-hmm. and be obedient and just to be faithful. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And we've seen we've seen the wonderful change in you. As the Lord's taken you from being this um, this man who's hungry to know more of God, and to actually see you walking in that now, it's, mm. it's such a joy for Stuart and I. Um, Jared, we're just about out of time. What would you? Is there any words of advice you'd have for anybody who's watching? Um, it's a big thing to. To, to leave a church because you feel you're not being fed properly, for example, and, mm. and to come to meet with a small number of believers. Yeah. What advice would you give anybody that's in the same boat? Because, Jeremy, there are thousands. We are inundated with emails and have been for a number of years. Or people saying, I can't go to church anymore. I'm not being taught or they're in apostasy. Mm. And um, what would you advise anybody in that situation? 
I think you need to constantly question, not so much as question the pastor, but question the teaching. You have to line it up with scripture to see if it actually contradicts or is in line with what the Lord says. If it isn't, then I would question the pastor Mm -hmm. and find out why he's teaching contrary to the word. But most of all, I think it's so important to find people who are of like mind, Mm -hmm. people who have got a desire. The Lord has his people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's just about finding those people and holding on to them Mm -hmm. and encouraging each other Mm -hmm. to walk uprightly before the Lord. Mm And we have fun as well, don't we, Jarvie? As a church, we, we, we're we able to laugh together, we cry together, we uphold one another. Mm. So that's lovely. Thank you very, very much. I'm just going to have to finish off now. And um, our next programme, we're going to be talking to your wife, mm-hmm. uh, Maria. So as I'm saying, we're just hoping she's holding off from going into labour. So thank you again, Jarvie. So that's it. That's a wonderful testimony to the Lord's work in the lives of his people. So don't forget, every Monday is the Lamplight Fellowship Study Meeting and they continue their study on the subject of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next week, we'll have a new guest here. We're going to have Maria and she'll be sharing her journey and encouragement with our Saviour. So don't forget, the GB 24-7 cards can be purchased in packs of 40 or we can send you the artwork so you can get them printed yourself just so you can hand them out to people because we like to think that we're we're not just Christian friendly but also to those who don't know the Lord. So thank you again for all your correspondence. Our sole aim is to encourage you to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. So until next week, God bless. This is GV247.TV bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series, a powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on gv247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, This film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch.